In this video, I'll show you how to add a dark mode to your React website. Hi, I'm Bill Sarur from Dev Mastery, and you're watching Mastery Monday, the weekly show that helps you improve your code and advance your career. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. So I'm working on a new version of devmastery.com and I've got this theme toggle so I can go dark mode, light mode. And I've also got this thing that toggles the font size for my articles, makes it bigger or smaller. I'm not sure I like this font size thing though. So let me know in the comments if I should keep it. Anyway, if you uh, change the theme and then come back to the site later, you'll see that the site actually remembers your preferences. So that's pretty cool. And I thought I would show you exactly how to do this on your own React site. So we'll head over to Code Sandbox. And the first thing we're going to do, uh, I've got an empty React project here. So we're going to add a couple of dependencies. So we'll add styled components. And then we'll add styled theming. And we'll add something called local storage fallback. And then we're going to import the theme provider from styled components. And we'll wrap the elements of our app in a theme provider. And then we're going to pass in a theme, which is just going to be an object with a mode property set to dark. Now we'll bring in create global style so that we can change the style of our website based on the theme. So we'll make a global style component. And we'll use create global style to set the body uh, background color to dark when we have uh, dark mode and light when we have light mode. And then we'll do the opposite for color. So um, light foreground when it's in dark mode and uh, dark foreground when it's in light mode. And so now we can drop in our global style component, uh, making sure there's one root element. So we're using a fragment. And now you can see, boom, there's the dark mode. And if we switch that to light, it's the light mode. So dark and light. Great. So now we want the user to be able to change it. So we'll bring in use state. And then we'll grab a theme variable and a set theme function from use state. And we'll pass in our light mode as the uh, initial value of our state. And we save that and pass in the theme instead. Now we can test if it works. So if we make this dark, yeah, the site is dark and light is back to light. So we'll add a button for toggling the theme and we'll wire up the button to our set theme function. And now in here, if the mode is dark, we'll return light mode. Otherwise we'll return dark mode. And save all that and test it. Boom, there it works back and forth. Cool. So that's the basics. Um, but what if we want to make it remember the last preferences? So for that, we're going to need to bring in a uh, use effect from react. And we're going to import storage from local storage fallback. And now we'll write a function to get our initial theme out of local storage. So um, we'll check if there's a saved theme inside of local storage. And if there is, we'll um, return a JSON parsed version of that. And if not, we'll just return our light mode. So now we can pass in get initial theme. And if we change the mode or toggle it there, there we go. So that works. The reason we're using get initial theme as a function rather than passing in a value directly to use state is because we're doing something a bit expensive by uh, targeting local storage here. So Whenever you're doing an expensive operation, you can pass in a function to use state and it will guarantee that the function will only get run once, will only get run the first time. And so that's what we want with something that is um, a bit expensive. The other thing is we're not targeting local storage directly. We're using this um, storage library because local storage can fail in strange ways depending on how the user has set up their browsing experience. So if they're in incognito mode or in a private browsing mode, it wouldn't work. So local storage um, fallback helps us with that. So next we'll uh, do a use effect so that we can actually um, save the theme into uh, local storage. So storage set item, and then we'll stringify um, the theme. 
and we'll make sure that this use effect is only running when the theme changes. So that's why we pass it in as part of the array at the bottom. So oop, we got an error. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Um, oh yeah, so because code sandbox um, changes uh, or saves stuff as you're writing, see that we've corrupted the theme variable in local storage because it got saved before we were finished writing our code. So by deleting it, boom, okay, we're back in business, it works. And if we open a new browser window, boom, it saves our theme. So we're in good shape. So if all you care about is a dark mode, then you're pretty much done right here. But often we have other requirements. So uh, for example, my silly little uh, text stuff. So to handle that, we'll um, go back to our sandbox and we'll import style from styled theming. And now what we can do is we can use styled theming to create a function called get background that's going to return the appropriate background based on the mode. So for light mode, we'll return a light background. And for dark mode, a dark background. We can do the same thing for the foreground, just in reverse. So light mode is a dark foreground, and dark mode is a light foreground. And now we can replace this business right here with our new get background function, and replace this with get foreground. If we save, we can see that it still works. Okay, so let's add a text zoom property, and we can set that to normal. And then we can um, spread our theme in here so that we can capture the text zoom property and anything else we might add in the future. And now we'll make a copy of this button and we'll call it toggle zoom, interrogate the text zoom property. So if it's normal, we'll change it to magnify. Otherwise, we'll just make it normal. So now we need a get font size and we can key off of the text zoom property of our theme. So if the zoom is normal, we'll return one EM. And if we've got magnify, we'll go 1.2. Now we need to set the font size inside of our global style. And if we save and try it out, it works. So this is all good, except everything's been implemented in a single file. It's all just one big app component. So let's break things apart a little bit. We'll add a new file called use theme, and we'll move our side effect code in here. We'll paste in the relevant imports and we'll export a default function called use theme. We'll let the caller specify a default theme, and then we'll paste in our get initial theme from before. And we can use the uh, original default as a fallback in case the caller calls us with no params. Then we can copy in the default theme that we received from the caller. And now we need to grab a theme variable and a set theme function. We'll use an underscore. I'll explain that in a moment. So we'll grab this from use state. And of course, we'll use our get initial theme function to set the initial value of our theme. Now we'll paste in our use effect function and we'll return an object that contains the contents of our theme, as well as our own set theme function that will destructure out the set theme, grab the actual theme, and use the internal set theme with the underscore to set it. Don't worry if you're confused by that. I'll show you a bit later on how that all works. So back inside our app component, we'll import use theme, and we'll grab our theme from there. Now we need to make sure that we're calling set theme from our new theme object. And we'll test things out. Still works. Good. So now we can delete the use effect. And we can also get rid of this get initial theme. All right, still works. Good. Good stuff. So notice we're setting the theme by passing in a destructured copy of our theme object, which itself contains a set theme function. So we could then recursively add set theme, set theme, set theme. That's why we have to destructure it out in here. And so this theme contains um, set theme because it's coming from use theme. And over here, we're returning both the theme and the set theme function. So hopefully that makes sense.
Okay, next we'll turn our toggle theme button into its own component so I can show you how to access the theme object from a different component rather than having everything just in one place. We'll call it toggle mode. And of course we'll import react and something called theme consumer from styled components. So now we can export our component as a default function called toggle mode. And then we'll use the theme consumer to get access to the theme object. And just copy paste our button from the other file. Let's rename this to toggle mode and save. Now we can go back to our main file, uh, import our new button, and drop it onto the page replacing the old button. So now we've got this toggle mode button. We'll save, test it out, looking good. Okay, so for our last trick, we're going to make a generic button component, and we're gonna use a variant prop to change the theme based not only on the mode, but also on the variant. So of course, we'll bring in styled from styled components and style from styled theming. And now we'll use styled components to make a button, and we'll set the background color based on a get background function. Oops, get background. So our get background function will come from a method of styled theming that is called um, variance. And so we can key not just on the mode, but also on a property called variant. So now we can say for the normal variant, in light mode, we'll have a light color, and in dark mode, a dark color. Then we can add another variant called primary. And for fun here, in light mode, we'll go with uh, papaya whip, and dark mode will be pink, why not? Let's save and make sure to export this, obviously. Now, if we head over into toggle mode, we can import our new button and use it instead of our old button. And then we can set a variant of primary. And you can see papaya whip, we save, and there's pink. Okay, so that's it for this week. I'll leave the code in the comments and I'll see you next week on Mastery Monday. Thanks for watching.